podcast is indeed speeding. Like that, she could do. You never get tired of you singing it to me right after you hear it. So great. Well, that's a sign of I like it. Good. When I keep singing it, good. After I'm hearing it, good. Because it's got a groovy beat. Good. Good. I'm really glad. Welcome, everyone. It's been a minute. No, that's not what this podcast is. No, it's definitely not this that podcast. No. This podcast is, I already told you that. I have. Have you now? Yes. You sure? Mm-hmm. You think I own one of these things? I think I might own one of these things. You own something, but not the thing we're going to talk about. <laughs> Very good. Um, hi, Melissa. Hi, Brian. How are you? I am okay. Yeah? Uh, yeah. There's lots Doing of stuff. Okay? I'm not going to get into too much of the stuff that's going on in the world, because I think... My advice with that is not hmm. to listen to people who don't know what they're talking about. So Good I'm advice. not going to say too much about it, but holy shit. Yeah. A little crazy it up in there. It is a little nuts. So yeah, that's a little weird. Um, we haven't done this in a long time. That's also a little weird. And I'm mm-hmm. sorry for, I know there's about five of you out there. <laughs> who are like, wait a minute. And we didn't get our bi-weekly dose. And I'm sorry. I am sorry. <laughs> Usually it's really easy for us to do it, but we've been kind of busy and... Um, Brian had a birthday and, right. uh, we were celebrating and doing fun things and, um, we got now, busy. Now by saying we, you're implying that I do something because I don't. You've enjoyed. That's right. I sit over here. You don't do anything? Is well, that your... well, you were saying you were apologizing to the people for not doing the podcast. And I'm mm-hmm. saying that you were saying like, we haven't been doing that. Well, I haven't been doing a, a damn thing, Melissa. Mm-hmm. So... Um, it's my fault is what oh, I'm saying. Okay. That's what I'm trying to tell okay, you. It's cool. all my fault. I like that. I like that. <laughs> also, it's weird. I feel like, I mean, I'm not saying we're going to stop making this podcast, oh. but I feel like sometimes my goal was to get to 50 episodes mm-hmm. and I think this is probably the 48th or 49th. I think that's probably right. Yeah. We're but it doesn't mean close. I have you can more. See how closely we pay attention. I have more bands to cover. Uh-huh. I have like a whole little book full. Yeah. A little book full. A whole little um, book full. And I would feel remiss uh, to not get to some of those artists because then people would be like, why didn't you talk about so-and-so? They're on probably the list. Yeah. You know? Right. So it's hard. But then also sometimes you and I have talked about this. Um. I like a lot of new music, too. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I think it'd be kind of fun because the thing I hear a lot from people our age, and that's people that are over 45, is um, there's no good music anymore. So wait, 44-year-olds? They say it, too. They say it, too. Basically, older people. (laughs) Ever since I've been in my 30s, I've heard it, really. Over the hill. They say things like, there's just not good music anymore. (laughs) And I'm always like, you're just not fucking paying attention. Ooh burn no i'm serious there's always good music there always is there always is there always is like there isn't a decade i know a lot of people like to say the 80s was horrible or whatever was horrible there's always something good in there you just have to find it you just gotta find it guys the thing is i understand i too get lazy and don't want to look for new music anymore it's hard but there are so hard looking for music so at some point maybe i might want to do that with you okay because i think it would be fun to share because there's so many people I have the same enthusiasm that I have for things that are 30 to 20 years old as I do for things that are current. (laughs) And uh, I would like to maybe talk about that stuff sometime. So I don't know. We'll figure it out. Well, Well, and and we also talked about, and just in case Mm -hmm. there's some, perchance, some Croatian person or Slovenian person that that is listening in for the first time. First of all, hi, hello. Thank you for being here. Yes. Uh, we're going to talk about music. Yes, we are. Even though we've got this very interesting banter <laughs> that we're doing right now, uh, we are going to get to some music. Uh, what I was going to say about listening to new music and being old yeah, is that you start realizing that new music sounds or is inspired by mm-hmm. or can sound very similar to Other things. old music. Yeah. And you're like, oh, they listen to that. 
And or, now they're playing that. <laughs> I also think it can just happen. Too. Sure. Absolutely. I mean, I do think people are influenced, but I also think, you know, different styles can sound similar without necessarily right. being so on purpose. But yeah, you're just trying to make sure that people know if this is the first time they're listening that we are going to talk about music. <laughs> I was so just usually, doing the old yeah, wrap what around happens is like, each week, each, you know, not week, but months now. Um, I bring, every now and again. Every now and again. <laughs> we get on the old microphones and record the, with a little button. And, That's uh, right. And uh, basically, Brian doesn't know what band I'm going to talk about, but it is a band he usually should know mm -hmm. or has heard. And today, I was once I've said this in the past. I'm playing it a little easy for him, mm. but it's not complete. We're going to get into that in a minute. But there's something else I want to say, Careful, Brian. Don't during our little smash hiatus, into that microphone, Melissa. I had a little time to think about some things that we've done. Hmm. You know, we're not consistent people. Hmm. So in this podcast, we started some things like you used to always say when you thought something was what. <laughs> I had a little catchphrase, didn't I? Yeah, you I? did. But I stole it from somebody else. So that's why you stopped using it? No, I just forgot. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember what that catchphrase was? What was it? I'm only going to pull it out when I hear one. Okay. but So you got to stay tuned for it. I'm just thinking it. there's people out there that are wondering what happened to Stone Cold Classic. Oh. What happened, Brian? Uh, maybe I haven't heard one. Oh, maybe that's the problem. I mean, that's pretty bad because I, I have hearts every single time. And also, we had all together now. So I tried to do a turning tables with Brian. Oh, he was yeah. going to do it for his birthday like he did last year. He was like, I think I'll take a pass. She's like, oh, here's a birthday present for you. That's what Go I did last Go figure out a band that you're going to struggle <laughs> over and sweat about no, Why would you hours. sweat about it? Yeah, because I, know. I sweat I know. about all of it, Melissa. Because right now, it just, just so you know, like folks out there, Here's the wheels turning in my head. As Melissa's talking about the band, I'm like, I think I know who this is. I think I know who this is. And I still, the name is just a gray, <laughs> fuzzy oh, I love mass it. I love it. in my total sausage of a brain. You are the cream cheese to my bagel, Brian. Thank you. Thank you for providing what I need for this podcast to be possible. Oh, my goodness gracious. Um, yeah, there's just, yeah. I think we should just start doing this. But, you know, you know, another reason we do this, Melissa, Come is on. because, you know, it's we fun. are representative, I think, of people in the world. Because there's people like you who are just nutbags and know everything about <laughs> music and minute detail. And uh -huh. there's people like me who appreciate it, but, you know, don't always latch on to the finer details that's at okay. times. And I don't think one is better than the other. I think Absolutely I not. I have no superiority. As I've said to you many times, I've always said if we had like t-shirts for this podcast or buttons <laughs> that I'd want them to say, if you thought you were cool, you weren't doing it right. Oh. <laughs> so like, because <laughs> that's kind of how I feel about music in general is I, I feel sad when something feels pretentious or snobby and I actually yeah. run, I run in the other direction. In the opposite direction. If that, that. happens. Um, so don't, I, yeah, I hope that anything it's playful and fun when we do this. And also I think, you know, I get excited. I was wondering when you were, you know, I was getting ready to do this and you were in the room chilling because that's what you get to do before the podcast. Besides you did set up, you did set up. It was my pregame. Um, like what goes on in your brain before you, you're probably just relaxed, you know, and where I get like, um, I just want to make sure for me, it's like, I get excited. Like mm -hmm. even this morning when we woke up, I like, I wanted to tell you things I was going to talk to you about. And I was like, I can't, I gotta mm -hmm, wait. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can't talk to him. Mm -hmm. But I get so excited because <laughs> I get allowed to spaz out on you for like an hour. <laughs> it's awesome. It's so much fun. So thank you yeah, for that is doing nice. it with me. I guess that was really kind of the origin of this in, <laughs> in the beginning was like, Wow, you really don't remember any of these things, do you? And and we should no. we should dedicate some uh, some time to it. And as we've said, it actually has helped. It has, as a matter of fact, it, it has is... been a bit of a. As I've said in the, this is a, another little thing you say. I was my like individual education plan for yeah. music. Yeah, this is what I need. I need a podcast. I need microphones it's like uh, our marital music <laughs> therapy session that is recorded for other people to listen to. Uh, but, so welcome, yeah. everyone. Yeah. But also, um, I, just, you know, I think it's also just fun to listen to music with somebody you really like and oh, totally. kind of talk to them. Oh, yeah, yeah, Well, you like sometimes, but I'm just joking. Yeah, and we had that experience when we were back in the old US of mm -hmm. A, and we got to hang out with friends. And, and I think on a couple occasions, they were like, you know, that was fun. It was fun just to sit and yeah. talk about one thing, be specific about yeah. one thing for, you know, Which have kind of an me. agenda. 
you and I were listening to a podcast that I really like that you're wrong about it. Oh yeah. Um, with Sarah Marshall. Um, and if you haven't heard that podcast, you should definitely check it out. I'll put a link to it. Mm-hmm. Um, but what she was saying, like for a little while I was feeling like, oh, maybe we should stop doing this podcast. It's too niche. There's not enough people that, you know, like probably even give a crap. And why am I spending all this time doing this? And, <laughs> you know, like, is it, am I like, feel like I've also, I just get, you know, I get in my own head about it and sure. the weeds about it, even though I do enjoy doing it. And I know the friends and people that enjoy listening to it, enjoy it. I get weird about it. And what she said was, you know, I don't know if you remember what she was saying, but she said people should make, there should be a billion podcasts. Oh, yeah. So I definitely say to anyone out there who's thinking about doing it, just go do it because who cares? And like, also, I want to hear different people. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't want to just hear the same format and the same kind of thing. Like, I love when people, I love when she gets like the thing we were listening to is she was reading parts of Amityville Horror and now and like and analyzing it with her friend. And it was so much fun and it was so funny, you know, and and I really appreciate like that kind of like silliness is something I really love. Probably not everyone's cup of tea, but I enjoy it very much, you know, and I just think, yeah, there's more room for it. So it kind of inspired me to be like, get off your keister and make another podcast. So we're making one. All we're right. making one today. So, okay. Brian. Yes. Oh, no. Hmm. <laughs> the time has come. What did you think that band was at the beginning of the podcast? So every week he doesn't know I'm gonna, what band we're going to talk about. So now is the reveal. Oh. I think you're going to know. I'm not worried about you. I do, but the I'm name is you. so slipping my memory banks right now are just not functioning at all. So you can't? No, I think I can name members of the band. Um, Mm -hmm. Ronnie James Dio. Yeah. Um, Talking about Rainbow? (laughs) No, I'm thinking some Kim Deal, perhaps. And her sister, Kelly. That's her name. And then um, the other two people who are in the band. (laughs) Who we've talked about. In great detail in another podcast. Well, I mean, we talked about the Pixies. And we talked about... Another band um, that is connected I know, to this. and I just, and I have I'll one of the you. records, and they have... You do. That's oh, the one we're not going to... That's We're not talking about that one, though. Oh, yeah. I don't want to talk about that one. Boo, doo, 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 doo. Not talking about it. Do, 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 do. Please don't sing it to me. Boo, doo, doo, Please don't. Boo, doo, Seriously. Boo, boo. I don't like it. That's the band, though, right? I actually don't like that song at all. <laughs> I love this band, but that song drives me crazy. Um, wow, wow, please. Ball, ball. No. Stop. Um, <laughs> so you don't know the name of the band. Oh it's a. God. I'll give you a. I'll give you a clue. It is a. Uh, a can we give you a clue? There's can I give you? Can involved. I please stop talking about that song? <laughs> can we give you a clue? <laughs> Here's the clue. It is a <laughs> slang term used by um, uh, gay people to talk about heterosexuals. What? Um, straight, uh, normie. Uh, it's oh, the breeders, the breeders, the breeders. breeders. Oh my god! So we're gonna talk about the breeders. I'm so rusty. I know. This is like I know my back. So you're asking me what I was doing while I was lounging. Yeah, I was reading about Pilates, Melissa. (laughs) Thank you very much. Yeah. And because I'm I've got just ongoing chronic back pain, like I'm sure anybody older than forty five, as you've mentioned, mm-hmm. our audience. So um our biggest demographic. That's right. And um I don't know remember why I brought that up or I don't what the know connection why was either. to the whatsoever. In that brief moment my mind went even further blank. It's okay. You were just saying like, oh, like you should be able to remember things. Yeah. I yeah. should be able to remember things. Well, this is what I want to talk to you about. <laughs> You're probably thinking like, why are we talking about this band? I have, you have one of their CDs. Yes, you do. I do. But the thing that puzzles me and puzzles me about a lot of people I talk to when I mm-hmm. talk to them about this band mm-hmm. is you don't have the first one, which is, I think, one of the best albums of the 90s. Yeah. Oh, hands okay. down. Like, and there's, I have plenty of I have Evidence. some support. To, okay. I have like, I'm, I'm prepared. I'm preparing my, my PhD <laughs> in the breeders for you. I'm just kidding. Um, but I do have some support. Master I class. have some heavy hitters that are okay. going to agree with me about this. Um, and when you told me, you were like, pod. And I was like, you don't, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Because there's different formations and incarnations of the breeders. And this was my favorite. Yeah. Um, of that. And I think it's much more raw and much more um, 
interesting to me. So, and we're not going to just talk about Pod. We're also going to talk about their other e- the EP that came out right after Pod called Safari, which that song we started off is from. Mm. Because I, like I said, that was my oof. I really, really love it. So let's get into talking about the Breakers. Let's brand. do it. Um, like I said, I want to talk about this band because I do feel like this the record in particular Pod came out in 1990, and I feel like. For a long time, especially in the 90s, this was one of my favorite albums. I listened to it so much. Mm-hmm. Like, there are albums you just remember, like, OK Computer. I've listened to it, I don't know how many times. Like, it would be hard to even think what. I remember the connection. What? <laughs> <laughs> you just connected your back problem? What is it? Come on, I'll let you have it. Is what that is my it? body is rusty <laughs> and, yeah. and like, knotted up. And so I, w- I was reading about Pilates because it's like, you have to stretch out your body, you know? And so mm-hmm. that was the same thing that just happened with the breeders. You have to stretch I'm, out your brain? Yeah. Well, I'm rusty at podcasting okay. because it's just been so long. <laughs> I can't remember. I'm going to be rusty too. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't thing. worry about it. And here's the other thing. When we talk about, because I, I want to start talking about the breeders. Yeah. And so, yes, I do have the popular one. Last Splash. That's right. And I think... No excuses, no mm-hmm. excuses allowed. But and we've talked about this in the past, which isn't a bad record, Brian. No, by the way, I don't. I enjoy it very much. As a matter mm-hmm. of fact, in college, I had to do a project about a. Uh, I had to do this like video montage project, mm-hmm. and I used "Driving on Nine, which is one of my favorite songs off that record. Anyway, um, it comes down. It came down to economics, Melissa. And when you walk into a record store and you have your whatever twelve ninety nine or sixteen, unless you get it used, I may have gotten it used for six bucks at Salt of the Earth in Columbia, Missouri. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so you go with the one you know, right? Yeah. I don't know, Pod. Hmm, I don't know it. I know this band, The Breeders. Well, that's what's weird. And we're going to talk about why people didn't know about it, especially okay. in the U.S. In the Europe, it was much more popular. Um, mm. Isn't it always? Part of the reason that it wasn't as popular <clears throat> is the age-old thing that happened, especially then, which is a band that is primarily featuring women mm. doesn't, even if they're in a band that's very popular, like the Pixies okay, and the Throwing Muses, which mm. are the two founding members of this band we're in. Okay. This band was formed by um, Kim Deal yes. and Tanya Donnelly. Tanya. Okay. I think it's Tanya. I always say Tanya, but it's not Tanya because it's with an A. So it's Tanya. Tanya. Tanya Donnelly um, from the Throwing Muses. And they were both in bands. So Kim Deal was in the Pixies. And very, she was very popular. They had just put out Surfer Rosa. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I'm going to say these things. I have some sources. My sources are Wikipedia, my brain. <laughs> the Breeders website, which doesn't Your give you personal much. experience. My personal and also an article I read, which I'm going to get into later. That's from Pitchfork, and I'm going to source that when I talk about that. All right. Um, but the thing about the Breeders and a lot of things at this time period is that I've talked to you about this before. But when I was young and I liked a band, you just didn't know anything about them. Hmm. Like I loved the Pixies; they were my favorite band when I was young, and I could find shit all about them you know what i mean you couldn't like and <laughs> what so they look like before or... i get into too much of their history i want to read from their page when you go to the breeders page and you hit bio i was unique i would just think it's so funny how these unique coincidences happen which is the people you like as writers the people that you like as filmmakers and use mus- and the music you like sometimes they interact with each other mm-hmm. and i've seen this happen quite a b- bit of times of things i like mm-hmm. and i started reading this bio and i was like this is very well written this is written by a writer and this is really interesting and of course it's neil gaiman so let me read it to you <laughs> and i think what he talks about is really it's fantastic because it's such a neat way to talk about them and i would like to read it to you people change over the years and the you that is you never changes Yesterday you were a kid and tomorrow you'll be old and you think you're the same person you were, despite all the evidence contrary. Music slices you in time. Once upon a time, we lived in a world of information scarcity. We knew too little about things and finding out about what we loved took time and effort and money and luck. The first time I heard of Kim Deal, it was because the co-owner of Dark Carnival, the bookstore in San Francisco I was signing in, had been mistaken for her the night before by a waiter who had taken her protestations that she was a bookshop person as a cover story and brought her and the people she was with, bookstore people, whom he believed to be the rest of the Pixies, free drinks all night. (laughs) I I now knew a band called the Pixies existed. 
I owned a tiny black and white television that sat on the corner of my desk and kept me company when I wrote all alone too late at night, playing badly dubbed European detective shows, late night rock shows, cheap television. Somewhere in 1989, it played a Pixies video. A week later, I had every Pixie CD you could find in London record shops. I loved the aesthetic as much as the music, the Vaughn Oliver art and typefaces. Information scarcity, I didn't know who these people were. I was 29 years old writing Sandman in England with two small children. I bought the CD of Pod and I wrote Sandman to the jangly breeders music. I knew nothing of the breeders beyond what I read on the minimalist CD notes. I knew the names of the songs because they were on the CDs themselves and I recognized happiness as a warm gun. Lennon's Snoopy and the gun aid inspired song of murder and addiction. It's my favorite Beatles song and seemed appropriate. Pod is a sequence of songs that come towards you, unstoppable, not needing to be liked, not needing not to be anything except themselves, glorious in their emotional flatness. The Berlin Wall had crumbled and technology would save us all. And there was a new optimism in the air. And despite the optimism, the breeders' music felt like a note of warning, melodic and dis discordant. All at the same time, women's voices singing from the darkness, uncom uncompromising, not soft, not strident, more like a chorus of ghosts, their faces set and expressionless, singing to us while fighting to feel emotions, to feel something. And he writes wow. more of that. Yeah, so there's more to read, and I'm going to put this connection, um, this connection, this link <laughs> to, to it later. Some but, people call them connections. But I like that very much because I really identify with what he's saying, yeah. which is like, I mean, you always ask like, well, how did you hear about that? That's how you hear about stuff. Like, it's just some weird, like, little coincidence. And then you're like, what is this? But you can't find anything because there wasn't... I just think people take for granted how easy it is to find stuff out now. So part of the fun of doing this again with you is that now I get to like find out stuff I didn't know, mm -hmm. you know. So anyway, I did know who were in the breeders. <laughs> so we'll get into that. So but Kim, so you knew who they were because yeah. you knew who the Pixies were. Yeah. And also because remember this mortal coil, the song you and your sister is Kim Deal and Tanya Donnelly oh, singing yeah. together. So they sing beautifully together. But this is the only time that they're doing this formation of it because so they were both in bands together. Not, not, they were both in separate bands, the Pixies yes. and Throwing Muses. Right. But they were touring together in Europe for okay. Surfer Rosa. Oh, Throwing Muses okay. was opening. Um, and uh, Kim Deal was like, hey, do you want to start a, do you want to start like some kind of side project? Because they did, both didn't know what was happening with their bands right after that. Mm -hmm. And um, so they started recording and making music. And I know this from listening to a podcast with Tanya, Don Tanya Donnelly is that uh, <laughs> I know I keep messing it up. Well, because you know what drives me crazy? It's because when we did the Throwing Muses episode, I said her name wrong the entire time. Because once again, information scarcity. I'd never heard her name out loud. Uh, yeah. You know, I'd only, I read it, but I'd never heard someone say her name or her say her own name until I listened to a podcast with her. And I was like, oh shit, we just did one. And I said her name wrong the entire time. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, and I love her, and I don't want to say her name wrong. Um, so I apologize. Tanya. <laughs> Just think Tanya Tucker. You'd be fine. Um, but then, uh, so anyway, but the, the agreement they had was that they would each take turns writing the songs. Mm. So the first record was going to be Kim Deal, and the next deal record was going to be Tanya Donnelly. Tanya okay. Donnelly, but Tanya. she leaves. Oh. Yeah. So anyway. So she did pod. She does pod. We'll get into that. Okay. I want to okay. confuse. Okay. I digress. Okay. So I do want to play some music in a minute. Um, and then they got Josephine Wiggs, who was in a band called The Perfect Disaster, and Britt Walford, who was in Slint. Uh -huh. And the way they got him was Kim Deal um, asked Albini to produce the record because he had done Surfer Rosa. Sure. Um, and he was like, and they needed a drummer. And he was like, why don't you use Brit? And she was like, okay. And, but he said, this is the thing I find very funny. Um, he said he would do it, but he was going to do it under a pseudonym. Hmm. So he was Shannon Doughton. <laughs> and when they played live, he was wearing wigs and like in drag and stuff. He was messing with it. And he's not the only name he used. I'll use the, <laughs> on the next recording, he used another name. Which so I he was dressing in drag while playing live. Yeah. yeah. He's just being silly. Okay. Just, but you could tell he was a man. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, he was, when, when he was in Slint, he was pretty, you know, little and feminine. He could have probably gotten away with it. And it's, that was just, you know, him being, I don't know really exactly the story behind that. I tried to dig a little deeper this morning and it didn't say much more than that. But anyway, uh, so they record, they, they rehearsed for, but anyway, 
before I get into that. Oh. See, look at me. I'm all oh over the place. Oh my gosh. I haven't done it in Shaking a while. Shaking off the rust. I'm also rusty. So, Brian, who is always the most important <laughs> person on this podcast? You. You might call them Omni. <laughs> We have a little hashtag for that person. Oh, my goodness gracious. Are you kidding me right now? Old Sneaky Eans nope. is coming up in no. here? No, Omni Ivo. Oh, Omni Ivo. Ivo Watts Rustro, oh, the founder gosh. of 4D Records. Um, you know, he had signed both of them already because okay. they were the Pixies and the Muses. Muses. But they went to him and said they sent him a demo. Okay. On the cassette because they, they did play one show, I think, in Boston and they billed it super boston girl group or something like that <laughs> um and he heard it and he said this is absolutely magical beautiful stuff when he heard ah. the cassette and so he said yes they you know let, let's do this um and they didn't i think that they didn't end up recording though until you know like i said they got together in 89 but they didn't start recording until 90 mm -hmm. they rehearsed for one week okay and, and then, then recorded, the pod. recorded 10 days in edinburgh with steve albini nice 10 Edinburgh. fucking days. So basically 17 <laughs> days total. Shit it out. <laughs> Less than 20. No, I don't think of it that way. I think it's brilliant. No, but I mean, uh, I, I mean then the best of ways, not yeah. like they just like laid a turd. <laughs> I mean, they it's like great, got that Brian. thing done. Well, yeah. So, so let's listen to some of this record that I'm talking about. Okay. This song is not the first song on the record. I'm going to play a lot of this record, almost its entirety, except for a few things. And it's okay. not because I don't like them. It's just because... You don't need to play the whole entire record. So this song is called... <laughs> Should we just put it on? Yeah, and... <laughs> just put it on. Ready? This song is called Doe, and it's off of Pod by the Breeders. every single second of that i know it's so crazy to me once again <laughs> i like the breeders i just didn't I, for whatever reason i didn't buy the pot. but can you already I'm, tell I'm with this i mean i want to get too into the weeds with it already but the way it sounds i mean yeah. i know it's albini but it's not just that it's them it's the rawness of it so i was going to ask you uh kim deal in the uh pixies she was mm -hmm. the bass player is yes. she also the bass player in this band no she's playing guitar okay her sister so her and tanya are playing guitar Brit Wal Brit Walford's playing drums and Josephine Josephine Wiggs is playing bass. Okay, um, gotcha. Yeah, that's what's going on. It's good. It's also her voice. I mean, God, mm -hmm. I don't know what it is about her voice for me, and it never sounds like it has reverb on it, which is great. Mm -hmm. And it always, it's just so perfect. I just love her tone. Mm -hmm. It's just so unique, and it's like her Dayton, Ohio accent kind of coming in, <laughs> which I always thought was Boston, but it's not. Like she's from Ohio. Yeah. But it's just got this it's beautiful Midwestern. Yes. She's just like, you know, <laughs> like got that sound, you know, yeah. but it's so great. And she's just but she's singing about such disturbing weird stuff most of the time <laughs> that it's like fantastic. So let's listen to a little bit more of Doe. I could see somebody saying like, well, they're just doing the Pixies, mm -mm. you know, because it's a little, especially She's that. She's a like, member of the kinda, Pixies. I know, but I'm <laughs> saying this is just, this isn't a different band. It's just the Pixies oh, without Frank Black. Different. I do too. I'm just, yeah. I, I could see someone like when that kind of, um, what when that? the drum beat goes from like a regular backbeat to a da 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 da, da. I feel like that beat's more slint. Maybe. Weird stuff. You know, like when I figured out he was in the band, I was like, oh. That totally makes sense because I didn't know that, yeah. you know, for a long time because of information scarcity. You know, I didn't read the jacket. No, but I also didn't know who he was when a pod came out because I didn't listen to Slint 
I didn't listen to Slint then. Yeah. It was later for me. So mm-hmm. um, anyway, I do think, of course, people probably made um, comparisons. I can't help it. But she was also, I, I mean, I'm not sure if this is true. This is allegedly. But a lot of the things I read and the things I've heard through through things, <laughs> I think even there was a Pixies documentary we watched a long mm-hmm. time ago um, that really focused more on Kim and her sister a little bit. Yeah. Um, and it felt like in her band, she wasn't in the Pixies. She wasn't able to write as much as maybe she wanted to. Probably. I know true. she wrote Gigantic, and we'll talk about that later. Um, but so you're finally getting to see her kind of do her thing. And yeah. I love when her and Tanya sing together. It's always so great yeah. and spooky. Mm-hmm. And I just think this whole album has a real mood and weirdness to it that I love. And I, re- I also didn't mention earlier on another reason she loved the name the breeders her and her sister had a band together when they were young mm-hmm. called breeders okay is another reason they used it and um she really loved horror movies and she liked uh cronenberg and there was mm-hmm. a movie i think in 1979 called the brood that she was kind of referring to mm. just for people who like scary things i want them to know so let's get into a little bit more something <laughs> else i didn't say when i was reading the um neil gaiman bio is when he talks about a little bit later in that he talks about this song we're going to play, which is they do a cover of Happiness is a Warm Gun, mm. which she was like my favorite. Like he was like, this is one of my favorite Beatles songs ever. And they're covering it. And it's so great. And I want you to hear that. So let's get into Happiness is a Warm Gun. The touch of a velvet hand Like a lizard on a window pane A man in the crowd With the multicolored mirrors On his hobnail boots Lying with his eyes While his hands are busy Working overtime of his wife... It's really good. Yeah, we're going to get more into that. Because, you know, I just want to briefly talk about even though we're talking about the breeders, the white album. <laughs> Holy crap. I feel like really that's probably the first like alternative thing I ever heard. Hmm, that's really when you think about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that record, I don't think there's any other record that is all over the place than that record. Yeah. It's just, I mean, it's so many things. It's got Obla D, Obla Da. Yeah. And Julia. And then Happiness is a Warm Gun, which is definitely my favorite part of the record. When this builds up, this whole sequence Mm. on this side of the record. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. It's just nuts. It's just totally nuts. And it was like super dark. And oh, I just loved it. And it was just so weird. And Dear Prudence, so many weird, beautiful. It's just crazy. (laughs) It's just a crazy, crazy record. <laughs> crazy I know they record. have a lot of crazy records, but it's the yeah, one I, I say, probably. Abbey Road's pretty crazy, but too. it's definitely the one I listen to the most. <clears> the <throat> White Album for sure, like because it's the one my parents had. You know, so I mean, I just inhaled it. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say I think my brother got it for Christmas one year. Like, I remember CDs him getting came it. Out. Yep, and he got the double CD. Yep, exactly. And I would listen to the it booklet. a lot. Yeah. Oh my god, I didn't even I didn't really bother with the back to the US, USSR part. I was mm-hmm. like, nope, going right to the second disc, which is this was this whole sequence. <laughs> Which was, I can't remember where it started. I think it started with um, Dear Prudence, maybe. No, I have to look at it. But anyway, beautiful. Yeah. And I'm just happy that she's covering it. And I think it even gets more into the whole, like, this record's so gritty. And it kind of completely goes along with it. Let's listen to a little bit further into it so we can hear Tanya singing as well. Super good. I think you got teary and I got goosebumps. <laughs> that is very Pixies. I've though. never that, heard that, that song. Ah! Like can, they do that. That is very Surfer Rosa, but I don't care. Surfer Rosa is also my favorite Pixies album. So I don't <laughs> mind. <laughs> I will listen to it. Like, But it's still their thing. It's their version. But I love 
the rawness of that. It's yeah. so beautiful. It's just so great. So I'm glad you're enjoying it. I can't it so wait far. to hear the 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 release of that. That's the tension part. And oh my god, happiness. I think the tension's even better in that part. Actually. Oh, it's in super their, good. In their, and I'm saying in their particular version, the tension is the best part. Mm. I think it's better than the release because the release is a little too sweet. I oh, think okay. that's like, oh. So this whole record is dark. You can't have too much tension, though, unless oh, you Oh, I don't have think a... so. <laughs> I fucking love it. <laughs> anyway, speaking of, let's listen to a little bit more. This song is called Oh. in there melissa yeah it might be brett doing a little backing folks wondering hmm assuming nice or is it steve no i don't think so (laughs) steve (laughs) which speaking of okay we got it we got to get into some albini the albines we got to talk about steve albini so if you're unfamiliar steve albini i know you're familiar but steve balbini is producing this, this record and he is one of my favorite producers sure and it's funny we've talked about this a little bit i had this idea because as I said, I'm over 45. And um, <laughs> I've been trying to figure out, like, what do I want to do for my 50th birthday? You're always asking me. Yeah. I think I kind of figured it out, but I'm also terrified of it. And I'm scared if I say it to you out loud, you're going to be like, oh. You want to go me. meet Steve Albini? No, I want to go record at Electric, oh. um, his studio. I think it's called Electric. I have it right here, actually. It's Electric Audio uh, in yes. Chicago. And his day rate is $900. Yeah, it's not bad. And you can anyone can do this. I'm going to put the link on here, y'all. He's one of the only producers, and I looked it up yesterday. I looked up all the other producers I really love. They don't do this. Yeah. He's one of the only people that does this. Price. No, I think it's awesome because the whole thing is like, you know, if you want to do this, this is the day rate, and this is how much I charge if I travel. This is what you get. This is what's going on. It's right. very, I mean, you're, he's not, I mean, you got to just you show up and be ready to do it. Sure. You can't be fucking but around. I was like, oh my God, I think I would love to do that. I'd like to have one EP sound like the way his stuff sounds. Mm-hmm. Although our stuff does not sound at all. It's a great like idea, Melissa. I think we should I might, do that. I think I kind of want to do that. So anyway, and, and I look, there's a schedule. You can book it. Like it's you probably all need stuff. to get on it. They say three, um, it's not that crazy. It was like three to six months. See you all, Beanie, if you're listening. Anyway, no, it's not like that. It's not like that. (laughs) But I'm going to put a link up. So if you're also someone out there that plays music and you're like, I've always wished I could work with Steve Albini, you can. You just book it. (laughs) Let's all do it for our 50th birthdays. Just show up like in mass and have all these records coming out by 50 year olds that sound like they're all produced by Steve Albini. He will not be, he'll be over 50. He already is. And it'll be amazing. But anyway, he's a great producer and, um, I'm going to put the link to that. And so he produced Surfer Rosa, as I've said, it's my favorite record. Mm-hmm. And some of you would also know in utero he did as well. But the reason he did that, and I want to get into that. You say that with such disdain. No, no, I Melissa. love that record. I do. But I just think this record is really great. Yeah. And I don't want to overshadow that with this because I think that this is fantastic. But the thing I also wanted to get into just a little bit is there's a review by Judy Berman um, from Pitchfork talking about this album. And she talks about why you were asking initially like why you didn't hear this one and um and what she says in this article which i'm going to quote to right now she said like so many underground bands that prominently featured women the raincoats the vaselines shown in knife the breeders got a boost in visibility during the 90s through the effusive support of kurt cobain Uh speaking to melody maker in 1992 the world's biggest rock star explained, the main reason I like them is for their songs, for the way they structure them, which is totally unique, very atmospheric. I wish Kim was allowed to write more songs for the Pixies <laughs> because Gigantic is the best Pixie song and Kim wrote it. The same year Nirvana would take the Breeders on tour and Cobain would later admit to deal in a joint interview with the UK ambassador to grunge, Everett True. I love Pod so much that I was really freaked out to meet you. So, like, he loved this album. He listed it all the time as one of his favorite albums of hmm. all time. Kurt Cobain loved it. Um, and he was totally intimidated by it. Hmm. And he also said that, like, when he did his first, I mean, when they did not Bleach, but when they did Nevermind, he said it was a total Pixies ripoff. Yeah, <laughs> but, right. But also, like, the pod was 
Yeah, I mean, the big drum sound that you're hearing. So the reason Cannonball and all that got big is because they opened for Nirvana during Nevermind. Right. (laughs) And they were on MTV. Yes. Please, you know, we're doing this. And also, she wrote this material between Doolittle and Bossa Nova. Okay. So, you know, they were doing okay. (laughs) They were getting more exposure. Yeah. So anyway, I think that this article in Pitchfork is really cool, and I think people should read it. So I'm going to definitely connect that as well. Let's get in a little bit more music. Let's listen to Fortunately Gone. I wait for you in heaven on this perfect string of love and drink your soup of magpies in a pottery bowl that looks as I am now. Brown, round and warm. Chime on. Those two singing together, mm-hmm. I swear. Um, I'm gonna go a little bit further into that song so you can hear more. What are you, hmm? What's your hums? I just enjoy you got any hums? No, I was enjoying the snappiness of that drum beat and their harmonies that were lovely mm. and fantastic. I'm glad you liked it. Yes. Actually, I wasn't gonna play more of that song. I, oh, I, I was looking at a wrong, never note. mind. Fuck that song. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. So, here's my first heart of the podcast. Oh. This song is called Iris. We're going to play a little more of that one, too, because, you know, it's got nice build-up. And all these songs are super short. They're all, like, you know, three and a half, something like that. I Mm. think that's a short song. Listen to me. I'm like, three and a half. (laughs) Short, you know? Barely started. Let's listen to a little bit more Iris. When Iris sleeps over, it'll be... I love how she sings our. I love our. it. I love it. It's like totally like <laughs> hoarse. Uh-huh. And like, you know, she's probably, they probably been recording like seven songs of theirs. And they just like really, you know. Oh, I love it. I love you do it. like it when people like I kind do. of That's scream the reason. out. Well, I just also like, it sounds like it's going to clip. Even when you're hearing, listening to this, I've never listened to this record on headphones. And it's really cool because whenever Tanya sings in the, you can just like, it feels like I can, I see her like next to the microphone in a room doing it because mm. it, it's so like right in your ear, mm. you know, mm. in a way that it isn't when you just listen to it on the stereo. So I'm into it. The other thing I forgot to mention about Mr. Albini is, uh, you know, he also, PJ Harvey, you know, rid of me yes. also was done by him, um, is that he states that he enjoyed this more than he liked doing Sir Rosa, huh. which is, that's, that's hardcore. <laughs> yeah, that's hardcore. You know. And why Edinburgh? Why were they in I mean, uh, Edinburgh? Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, there's a good that would have been vibe. A Maybe there was a studio they wanted to work. Yeah, at, I guess you know? so. Oh, I'm sure they had their reasons. Interesting. But let's get a little bit more into this record. This song is called "Opened," and it also has a heart. Okay.
Get yeah. a little more bass in that That's one. Right. All of it's just so. I mean, I'm just so happy listening to this with you. I did realize we skipped one song though on the last. Come play, on. Because uh, uh, when I was turning the page oh. on my little notebook that I use, I was trying to get ahead so people wouldn't hear it. Mm. So I did it during a song, and I was like, "I'll just play that song. I'll remember." I forgot. You forgot. It. <laughs> so this song was the first video they made, and it was for Hellbound. Is what the song is called, and they recorded it right after they recorded the record. Mm. And I remember seeing the video and it's, I'll show it to you. It's this really weird kind of like the two videos they made that I saw before, you know, Last Flash and all that were Safari and Hell, Hell, Hellbound. And they're both just such weird, stark 70s looking kind of <laughs> weird videos. I'll show them to you, like public access looking kind of thing. Mm. I'll have to show it to you. So let's listen to Hellbound. It lives. And folds of red and steamy I can remember that one. Yeah. I remember hearing that. I one. love how Josephine is like, hellbound. <laughs> like, you hear a little bit of her British accent. She's the only Brit in the group. But, ah. Yeah. So, like, anyway, I just love, she's always very, like. Matter of fact. No, just very kind of stoic in her singing. Mm. I, I, I'm a big fan. In the video, too. She's just like. <laughs> I'm just show you. It's fantastic. And you can kind of hear, this reminds me also in that um, Judy Berman uh, review that I read in Pitchfork. She also talks about how. Tanya Donnelly and Kim Deal went to go see the Sugar Cubes, mm-hmm. who at some point might be covered. And uh, they were both just like, because they they had this big dance hit, hit called Regina, and they were like, we have to do that. And like this was like their, <laughs> <laughs> but they their realized they, that neither one of them had the capacity to like write a dance song, you know, <laughs> like kind of thing. So that was really sweet. And uh, and I did hear in a podcast that we had connected to the Throwing Muses episode. Um, with Tanya Donnelly talking about this time of them and being together and it's how much she really loved being with Kim and they just liked hanging out with each other yeah. and enjoying they had fun yeah yeah and you can hear it I love it so let's listen to another song this song is called Only in Threes Yeah, it's like her singing is like she's whispering, but she's also like has a lot Projection? of yeah projecting and singing. I think it's just her tone. She's just soft, got the sweet tone. Yes, probably lots of cigarettes helps that. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> just though. Just smooth, the right combination though. The would tone you take there. it from Leonard Cohen? I don't think you would. <laughs> right? You know, I mean, or sometimes old, it know. does its job. Weights. I mean, the old time Some people newsman. could say he lost his voice. Some people say it's better. You know, I just don't know. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah. 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 Nothing. A couple of one twenty Marlboro lights won't fix. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I think it's beautiful. It is. Uh, so let's listen to another song. It's called this one. It's called Limehouse. Mm. Every alternative band after the Pixies and the Breeders needs to pay them for using that kind of sound. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Because it was so replicated by so many people, not well. Very much. Yeah. You know, very much. It's it is beautiful. Very that. <laughs> what? Very that. It's very that. <laughs> it's very that. 
So the only thing Brian and I watch on television is RuPaul's Drag Race and Toast. <laughs> What's the new Toast? It's Toast of Tinseltown now. Toast of Tinseltown. And I think we have not met anyone else really yet that likes Toast. So if you're out there and you like Toast, we toast to you. If you don't, go watch it. Oh my God, it's good. It's on YouTube, yeah? No, I mean, it's on a network, but it's hard. The, the Toast of Tinseltown, we've only been able to find. We pay for services. We pay, guys. We do, but we haven't been able to find that one on anything. Anyway, you know. find it. It's good. Oh, my God. Yeah. Go to the video store. Rent it. So let's listen to a little bit more of what? Limehouse. <laughs> That's even crazier. Uh, they're, they exist. Orbit. No, they... Yeah, they do. Yeah. Video right, drones. Guys. Let's go. If, you, if there's not one, please open a video store so people can rent videos. I would. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> You're crazy. Just busting anyway, it. A little bit later into Limehouse. She's in a lime house. I haven't really ever gotten in depth about that. Mm, I'm usually really into lyrics, house? but um, yeah, I don't know what a lime house is. Maybe mm. like a sour place. Perhaps. Or I'm thinking like lime, the like, you know, thing you can mine out of the ground. Mm. Lime. You know, you can add it. You can add lime to concrete <laughs> and like make it harder and stuff. You could make it harder. Or like you could use it to line a soccer field. Could, they could. do that too. Yeah. You can make chalk out of it. Mm. Scratch on a board. I'm not sure, Brian. I'm not sure. So this is the Deep last. Deep thoughts. This was, was Brian Morrison. Yes. Um, this is the last song on this record. Oh. But then we're going to play a little bit of a EP. Okay. But this one has two hearts. And what? It's called Metal Man. Okay. And there's a reason I like this one. I'm going to tell you why after you listen to a little bit of it. It all sound wise starts to come up more and more and kind of, you know, and it's also, Build. it reminds me of like, he did this with uh, PJ Harvey as well in the production, which is like, and I'm not sure if he's doing it for this reason, but it feels like it's like a, turn up that volume. Mm-hmm. Just, you know. Go ahead and turn it up. Just turn it up. And then we're going to blast then, your face off. <laughs> I just mean to just, just turn it up a little bit. <laughs> just, just a little bit. And Let's then, see. <laughs> we, do we want to, I think we need to see what's going to oh, happen. Okay. Let me go up a little bit further because I think there's a reason. Let's try. He's tricking you just like in uh, Rid of Me. He's like, tie your legs to me. Just nothing. Just don't worry. I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to start screaming or get really loud. It's totally not going to happen. <laughs> I love that. Though. Also, that song reminds me of Sid Barrett. Like, because hmm. it's very, um, especially all the talking and the, um, oh. that she's doing. And it mm. sounds like the, 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 um, it just sounds spooky and kind of. The fun. wall? No. Like solo Sid Barrett. Oh. Yeah. So, okay. Anyway, I like it. Interesting. I like it. I like also that, especially in headphones, is nice because it is. it's doing hear it. interesting, fun things. So then a couple years later in 1992. So that's the end of the pod. That's the end of the pod. Minus a few songs. Okay. Just two I think I've left out. But um, please, we're going to give this whole record a listen. I'm pretty sure Brent is in this. Sure. Over, and that's what I would it. highly recommend. But then they came out with um, an EP called Safari. And this is when they're full on breeders now, I think. Mm. Like, I think that's been happening because 92, I think. 
Mm, I have to look at it again. Maybe. I don't think the Pixies broke up until 93. Anyway. Digress. I digress. But now Kelly's in the band. She okay. was already playing like as a third guitar player when they would tour. And mm-hmm. understand too that that formation of the band I told you very rarely even was all together or played together. Like Britt wasn't always doing the live stuff. Mm. And then when he he did, I didn't. I thought he was done after the first record. He had another pseudonym. This time he's Mike Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> classic how silly that is a stone cold that's classic so, right there <laughs> fucking hysterical so so it's kelly deal kim deal and kelly deals playing more lead guitar actually which is very ironic because they said when she joined the band she did not know how to play guitar wow <laughs> and, and kim is t- very good so i mean she obviously caught up and also the, the reason i like that last song not to go backwards is I'm a down strumming bitch. Oh, and yeah, very like, much. And that's how I play that's guitar. What, so I was like, right oh, there. yeah. Like, jung, 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 like jung, every jung, song jung. I first wrote, I sounded <laughs> like that. And I love it. Um, and then, so it's Britt Walford on drums again. And Tanya is on this. Tanya's on it, but she's not going to be in the Breeders for very long. Okay. Like, but this is like, she was, like I said, it was supposed to be the next record that she wrote. Mm-hmm. But then this is just the EP that came out. And it kind of wasn't happening. So she was like, she started belly. Ah, right. Obviously. She right, had some right, other right. things to do. And that was all actually on the tip of my tongue. Mm-hmm. Belly was right there. It was on I the tip of your belly. It was on the tip of my <laughs> belly. And yeah. Yeah. And then Josephine Wiggs is still on bass. So let's listen to a little bit of this record. This is how he started, but I want to play it again for you because I want us to really focus and hear a little bit more of it. This song is called Safari. <laughs> That's all we're going to listen to. No, That's fantastic. No, I'm just joking. We're going to go back up. That's my favorite of their singles because I think it's so spooky and great. I love the ha-ha. It's a nice touch. <laughs> uh, and also, it's just so loud and fantastic. Yeah. All of it's just beautiful. It's beautiful, Brian. Beautiful. <laughs> so let's listen to a little bit more of this one. And it, once again, this is on 4AD mm. and, and, and also Electra in its different parts of the world. This song is called Do You Love Me Now? And I think you might know it. If I saw you now. Could I look in your eyes? Do you think of me like I dream of you? Do you wish you were here? Yeah, I know that one. It sounds like he's doing so like a good. like that. <laughs> Phil Collins, <laughs> like what is that? It's very crisp. It's a very uh, what's the reverse gate reverb like drum effect, mm. but it's like a really simple one, so it's not so. And Albina didn't, didn't do this recording. It's very snappy. Um, yeah, but you know what I mean. <laughs> like it has yeah. a little bit of a, a weird sound to it. Mm-hmm. We're gonna hear a little bit further into it. That was a weird sound in the headphone that I'd never heard, though. On one side, it was a very wah-wah, like yeah. man singing kind of weird thing that I'd never heard before. Yeah, in the beginning, there was some kind of like like uh, mm-hmm. guitar string rubbing going on. It was strange. It would be start? It's like, guitar string rubbing. 
It's really weird. That is really weird. That's a great song. I yeah. like that one a lot. So, Brian. Yes. Do you feel like the Breeders are an important band? No. <laughs> no. We should just forget them. Also, I want to say they have a lot of other <laughs> things out there. Um, they yeah. have a record that came out in 2018. And, of course, they have Last Splash. They have um, many EPs. Um, they had another album in 2002 and 2008. Um, so check them all out. You know, it's yeah. just I, we are in this podcast usually focusing on stuff that Brian had missed <laughs> specifically. <laughs> so that's why I'm covering that. Um, but I, I just think that that record deserves to be up there when people talk about like, ne- never mind being this really important album pod needs to be in that next breath. Yeah. Because much like, and I think Doolittle was also an important record when that record came out, but this mm-hmm. one, it, it's just such a great album and I don't mind the last splash. It's fine. It's great. And I'm glad they got the success. They deserve it Yeah, because they're so great. Yeah. But, um, I just get frustrated that pod gets left behind, but from American audiences, I think Europeans, they knew <laughs> they heard of it. It did well because there was a lot of anticipation about it over here mm. because of the Pixies being much more popular in Europe than they were in the States. Right. So I think, you know, there was a, they were a ready hunger for it. And also writers maybe would write about it where they might not as much in the States. So mm-hmm. Anyway, I'm super into it. And then she also had a band called the Amps, which I, I like as well that I have a CD of hmm. that you should hear. That's another side project. Um, but I hope they get to recording some more. I hope that, you know, I'd That'd like be wonderful. That. I would love to see some more. I've heard say, that they I, are. Did, did you ever see them? No, I've never seen the Breeders. Yeah, me neither. To. I would really, really love to. I want to say that they I've were the on Pixies. some kind of like, you know, Twice, no, no. the, uh, in the nineties with your Lollapaloozas, there was, there was also kind of copycat festival kind of shows that I feel like they were part of mm, and maybe I, I missed them on a side stage. I, I know or that I think I probably said this in the pickies, pick, pickies, pickies in the pixies episode, which was our second episode. Um, I'm scared to listen to it cause it was so long ago. It's probably, um, <laughs> but I stood in front of Kim deal. I think the entire time the pixies played. Yeah. Like I did not move. That's right. We saw our play when we saw we the did pixies too, play. But when I saw them play before without you, when I was younger, right. and when they were still not broken up yet. Mm. I was just like, I'm going to stand right here. <laughs> I'm not going to move. And yeah. And like, were you pleased? Yeah. Yeah. Because she just makes it look like she's not even trying. You know? hmm. She's just like, you know, like she's a, she's a, she's a badass. She's true blue. Yeah. The whole band. Great. Fantastic. So yeah. So yeah, for sure. Check out this one. Listen to the whole record and go buy it. Just go buy these. Go buy just it. don't even like yeah. question it. And read that Pitchfork article if you're the, someone who's interested in this sort of thing. It's mm-hmm. It's a really good review of their album. And the Neil Gaiman bio, mm-hmm, maybe, mm-hmm. if you want yes, to give it a second too. read. Yeah. Very good, Melissa. Very good. I am pleased. Good. And tickled. I'm tickled glad. pink. I'm glad you're tickled. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you didn't like that one, did you? <laughs> uh, tickled pod. Tickled pod. How that's about better. that? That's better. Do you think that's our podcast got their name? Of course. From, from the this pod. record? Yeah. I mean, they deserve more credit oh, for that. They deserve wow. a ton more credit. Jesus, that's crazy. And we're so sorry it took us so long. I'll try to be better. <laughs> but we're getting Things close happen. to 50. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I can't make any guarantees. You're going to be putting out a song uh, produced and recorded by Steve Albini, apparently. <laughs> is what's going to happen. I got to write some you songs. You heard it right yeah, here, yeah. folks. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see about that. That's still a few years off, <laughs> but I need to rehearse. Yeah. Anyway. Just start rehearsing. Well, right. thank you, everyone, for listening once again to I Already Told You That. Yeah. It's another fun one. What are we going to go out on We're going to go out on a Who cover that's also on the oh. Safari uh, EP. It's called So Sad About Us. Oh, all right. Well, then fast at what? <laughs> huh? Oh, my gosh. Thanks for listening, everybody. See you next time. Bye. So sad.